hi, it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and I have a really fun project to show you today. Um, we're just going to kind of walk through making some mushrooms. As many of you know, I'm really into doing fairy projects, and for the past month or so, since we've been in quarantine, I have been doing um, YouTube Lives with creating a fairy house using one of my patterns from back in 2013 2014 the summer fairy house you can see those here on my youtube channel they're um from the the videos are from two hour long shows so there's all sorts of other chit chat and other stuff discussed but i wanted to do these as a separate video because these are something that i think um i'm going to be using on multiple projects um moving forward now, these are not based on any real mushrooms other than maybe the one that has the, the red top to it. Um, I don't technically know, you know, uh, that much about mushrooms. I just was trying to create mushrooms that would work really well on my fairy houses. And I wanted to use products that I had around as many people don't have as quick and easy access to products. Um, to create these, but they, these have been incredibly fun to make. There's the, the one with the kind of the classic red top toadstool. Um, then this one's got a little bit longer stem. And with these, I did kind of a pinky, the underneath, I don't know what those are, those little fin things are called. And then these three little guys. Um, now, the, I didn't do the fin things under here because these are so tiny, you're not going to be seeing up underneath those. Um, but so these ones are a little bit more um, green. So let me kind of talk to you a little bit about the products that we used. Um, <coughs> the main thing that I used on these was something that are easy to find at the grocery store. Um, coffee filters. <laughs> now, there's, there's a couple of kinds. Now, the combed style now... The ones that I've been using are the Malika coffee filters. And what I like about them is they've got this texture kind of on one side. It's part of the filter, I guess. I got some other brand and they didn't have this same texture. And what's cool with this these filters is they take inks really, really cool. Once The side that's smoother, it doesn't attached to as much so it's a softer color and then the color is a lot more intense on the side that's got to cut the raised dots but these are what I use for the caps of these mushrooms and toadstools for what I use for on the the body of them I use the um I don't know what kind of um basket I guess style um, in both the white and the natural, I use the white ones on the, these tall ones and the red toadstool, and then I use the natural color on the little ones. Um, and these come like 200 in a package. So, um, you can make toadstools for like weeks. <laughs> so, um, and again, these will also um, accept ink. I mean, they're paper. Um, what I've done with these basket style ones is I took, and since I've been making masks, I have my iron and sewing machine and stuff out. Um, I just ironed them flat. You could also dampen them. If you don't have an iron, you could just dampen them and kind of lay them flat. It's not super critical that they're flat. I just liked them better flat. So I went ahead and ironed them. So. And I've used both the white and the natural, as I said, and then I've just used the natural, <coughs> excuse me, of this. I might get some of the Malika ones in the white as well. Um, now these, you might have them at home already. Um, otherwise, they're readily available at the grocery stores, and they're just a couple bucks for a box of like 200 of them. So two different kinds of um, coffee filters and then I'm just using some paper towels now I know things like paper towels are like gold <laughs> I save my paper towels for when I have my toast in the morning to use for cleaning up messes and stuff in my studio so I save these you can use the napkins you get from drive-through 
Um, or you can actually even use um, some of these um, filters as well. And that's just kind of the stuffing down inside the, um, the stock, I guess it is, of the toadstool. Um, I also use some covered wires. These are like 18 to 20 gauge. Um, you could use uncovered wire if you don't have the wrapped stuff. Um, I use this, these a lot on a lot of my projects, so I have a um, good supply of it. But you can use just regular wire. You can even use pipe cleaners uh, for that matter. Then you're also going to want um, um, a spray bottle of some water. You're going to need some cardstock, which I've cut into a circle. And I get this size circle, which I've used on a lot of them, is on your score tape. The inside of the score tape is a great size, and that's like a three inch. For this larger one, I used about a four and a half inch circle. And you'd be amazed looking around in your work area or your home how many things you can use to just trace around for... Um, that circle. For this one, um, I have a spool of quarter inch elastic that I've been using and I just use the the end of the spool to make um, to make the circle for that one. And I've just cut this out of it's kind of a heavier weight craft cardstock. Um, just your typical stuff that we use in so many of our albums and such. Now I've marked um, across the um, the width in both ways um, because we'll adjust the size of that. So let me just keep going over the materials and I'll, then I'll come back to um, doing that part. I've also used some for the dots and stuff that are on it. I've just used some squeeze bottles of paint. This is happens to be a fabric paint. It really doesn't much matter. But you could also use a small paintbrush or the end of a paintbrush dipped in acrylic paint to make your dots um, or the brush in. Um, but this makes it super easy. And I, I've used it in the black and the white. And then I also used a green on these guys. Um, <coughs> excuse me. To um, paint my cone shape coffee filters, I've used some Distress um, Oxide Sprays. If you don't have the sprays, don't worry. You could also use... Um, the um, pads and I'll show you how to do that or if you don't have um, any of the oxides you can also use just distress ink or other kinds of ink um, to to color your um, coffee filters so let's go ahead and get started first thing that we are going to want to do is um, let me get this out of the way because I'm going to be heating some stuff up as well. Uh, I'll need my... Oh, good, it's clean. <laughs> it's always a bit of a surprise in case I don't have it clean. So with these, first I'm going to trim off the part that turns it into a cone so that I can lay it out flat. So open it up. And it doesn't really matter which side you're going to spray on. You can spray on either side. I'm going to go ahead and spray this one um, with um, the pink because the one I'm going to make today is going to be like this one. So I already have, I have some small pieces left over still um, from where I painted. I think you can kind of see on this one, it's a little bit brighter on the side where it's got the textured dots. Then on the other side, it's a little bit softer color. This way it kind of grays out on the one side and the polka dotty side. It gives some texture. So, um, and I'll use this one for the um, the inside fins. So, for the um, the the red ones, I started out with just some worn lipstick oxide spray. I don't have any of the red ones. I don't have a lot of these sprays at this point. Um, but I started out with that one. Then I'm gonna throw just a little bit of vintage photo on there. If it's sploppies, all the better. And that's a technical term, sploppies. So, um, and then I can, see it doesn't, it, some of it soaks through, but then I can move this around and soak up some of the stuff that's on the edges. 
see, you can just use this, clean your mat off all at the same time. So that gets the kind of the start of it. And then I also am going to use a bit of uh, bright persimmon, which is kind of a corally orange color. And I'm just going to, if I hadn't already wiped this off, I would, I would want to clean my mat off before I put my ink on there. And I'm just pressing it into my, my um, nonstick mat. And then I'm going to take my spray bottle of water Just get it nice and wet. See how it kind of beads up and stuff? That gives a nice cool effect. Now I can do this on either side. And just kind of lay it into it. Maybe do it a little bit on both sides. Just to keep adding some color. See, and now it's a little bit more of that red tone. And I, I don't mind having some spots that are not, don't have as much on them. So let's see, wipe it up a little bit more because I'm going to throw another color. And then I'm going to take, let's see, I'll use a little bit of fired brick, which is a darker kind of red color. Do the same thing. Just press my pad onto my cleaned off nonstick mat. And again, you can use regular Distress inks if you don't have the oxide inks. Um, it's just going to be a little bit more transparent, less, you know, the, the oxides have that, it just are a little bit deeper. See how it's starting to, because this is damp, it bleeds into the other colors. So. And you can dry it a little in between if you want. Set that off to the side because it's kind of saturated. It doesn't want to soak up, soak up more of it. So, so at this point, then we can just take we can take our heat gun and dry it. Or you can allow it to dry on its own. It dries faster. You hold it up and it's not up against the, the mat itself. Obviously you can let this dry as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this aside and let it dry. So you don't have to sit there and watch it, <laughs> literally watch it dry. Um, Cause I'll just use the piece that I already have. So, but you can see how that's going to give me the coloration that's on this one. So I can set this aside, let it dry for another one. Now I'm all red fingers. All right, so let's go back to that little circle of craft paper that I cut out. And then I'm going to cut it up to the center on one of these quarter lines, like so. And then kind of roll it till it's about. So if I take it to the next quarter line, so it's three quarters of the circle, um, that's about a nice size. I would say these kind of toadstools and mushrooms are a little bit broader than say like these, which are taller and skinnier. So these, I would, if I were doing some more of those little tiny ones, obviously I would really crank it down and make it more of a cone. But I think with this one, going to about the three quarter size, so I can trim it off just off to one side of that line there. And now before I do anything, turning it into a cone, I just kind of want to crumple up the edges with my fingers, kind of give it some shaping so that it's not super um, stiff. Kind of do that with the entire thing, just kind of breaking some of the 
the um, strands of the paper a bit. If you want to use um, like a um, mouse pad with your um, the um, stylus tools to shape it, you can do that. So I just need a little bit of my glue. So now I'm going to glue it into the cone. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I love allergies <laughs> season. It's so much fun. All right. So we've now made it into a little cone, but it's like, wow, that's kind of pointy. So let that dry just a couple of seconds. And then I'm going to take my water bottle and spritz it just kind of on the point. Let it get some dampness. Let it soak in for a sec. And then I'm going to take it. Kind of just squish the tip real gently with my finger on in that point. Just squish the tip down. Pop some of the water off. And just keep mushing it a little bit till you kind of like how not pointy it is. So you can see how we've kind of taken the point off so it's kind of rounded at the top now and that seems like it's a pretty good shape so I want to dry it of just the hair before I start putting um, paper on it with my cast iron fingers with the heat tool I really should start using tweezers to hold it instead of almost burning my fingers but old habits die hard okay so we've got that shaped nicely maybe kind of really crimp the edge under just a little bit so then I can also just kind of give and I'm just using some a brown. This is vintage photo. Just to knock some of the color off the edge. Alright, so then I have my pink colored or red toned um, dried coffee filter that's all colored on this curved edge, which will be I will use this curved edge along the edge of my um, mushroom as well, I'm going to go ahead and just throw a little ink on that edge just to give it a little darkened edge. And then I'm going to tear this into strips or sections, kind of wedges, maybe strips. This one I'll probably tear then this way so I can have one going like that. So then I just have some pieces and now I'm going to take on this edge here, I just kind of lick my fingers. I'm going to crumple the edge up just a little bit, not a lot, just kind of, if you can get it to roll a little bit, that works really well. So I'm just kind of curving up that edge. So then I'm going to place that at the edge and then glue it down on to the mushroom cap. So just put a little to start with, just laying that on the edge, hanging it over the edge just a slight bit, and then just going in here and gluing this down. And this stuff glues really easily. And I, I just use my um, uh, scotch, which used to be called quick dry. Now it's called, what is it called? Tacky glue. And just work your way around. There's another little piece. so And overlap them slightly. But you want to make sure that you get pretty much all areas of it glued down. Pull this end up just to scrunch a little bit.
you're going to get a little bit gluey messy doing this because you want to get your glue underneath all those to the edge. If it hangs over a little, you can just kind of use that to tack those edges down. Okay. Next section. Now, I should have rolled these all before. Like I said, I just want to crunch, crunch it up a little so it's not quite so perfect. And then just hang it over. It, they don't have to line up. You can be kind of chunky monkey. Even on the outside here, you can kind of just, the overlaps and stuff, you can just run glue even on the top of it slightly just to get it attached down. Keep working my way around. Now this one, I probably can take that part off. Gluing. And those little torn edges are really easy to get to stick down then. So this under if it hangs over, it dries clear. Just kind of rub it on. It's very forgiving stuff. So now I'm gonna run that one on that little corner edge. So maybe ink up that edge just a smidge. This little corner right here. Put your ring on there the way I want you to. There you go. Okay, so then this guy can go right there. He doesn't need to be quite that tall. Ink. That edge crumples it up while it does it. This one hangs over a little more, so I'll just crunch it up so it tucks up. Ooh. Sticky gooey fingers. Make sure these edges and stuff all get stuck down. And maybe just a little bit of this piece right here on the very tippity top where everybody all came together. Like I said, you're gonna get some glue on your fingers as you're kind of rubbing this in, but it glue just absorbs right in. All right, so that used up that good, nice little chunk piece of it. So there I've got my kind of main color on there. So let's give this a quick little dry. Also, then I'm going to take some of the like darker red. This is aged mahogany. And this I'm just going to kind of, without really hit, I'm just kind of hitting on some of the highlight places just to add some little dark definition. It's kind of got a violety tone to it. Maybe give it a just a mist so you hold your water sprayer you know, a ways back from it. And then that kind of reacts a little bit. Doing that, all distresses work with water, react with water. So that's going to give it just, whoops. Just give it some other little toning to it.
It's so hot, sorry. <laughs> All right, so we can set him aside for the moment, but that gives us our little cap. It's a little bit too dotted for me, so let's get it a little more smeary. And that'll work. Okay. So let's set our little cap aside. So now we're ready to make the base. This is where I'm going to use some of my wires so um depending on the height that you want it to be you don't want it you know if you want some tall skinny ones these ones tend to have a short stubby kind of base to them so i'm just i kind of estimate that's about how tall and then i want it probably about a, not quite an inch wide at the bottom so i'm just going to fold my wires like that i'm going to come up a little ways from that bottom and twist those together. And then I can just fold back on itself. Wrap this around that part. And then I'm gonna come down to where I'm just about even with that, fold it over, come to the other side and then about the same width, bend it up. And then wrap back around up to the top. Wrap that around up into the top. Don't need tools unless you want to use some pliers or something. But you need those to be. So that's kind of giving me that kind of bulbous shape. Kind of squish them around a little bit and that's kind of the shape of my base this is where i'm going to take some paper towel now i'm going to tear it into strips i know my paper towels and mine like to go across and not down the length so i have shorter strips so let me use one of these fatter ones i'm going to kind of crumple this up might need more pieces than that and i'm going to kind of stuff this little cage part a bit. I'm going to use one of these skinny ones to take this top part. Now you try to do this without distorting the shape too much. And this is where you could use tissue paper or you could use um, some of the um, these kind of coffee filter so all right so I've got that kind of nicely stuffed in there it doesn't have to look pretty it's never going to show it's just kind of holding helping to hold that shape so then I'm going to take my strips I'm going to throw a little bit of glue on there and then I'm going to just kind of lay these guys on there again you're going to get kind of gluey messy and I'm just I've got it kind of at an angle started I'm going to wrap Putting some glue on as I go. Just wrap. Get down to the bottom. I can just wrap it around, stick it back down again. And this is where you're going to start having to add some more glue as you're trying to wrap it around that, that base part. Crunch it up a little bit. So we've got that wrapped around. We're going to do some more, especially down here. Let's get some more on there. Again, I, I try to start them always at an angle because then they kind of spiral down. Just kind of slather glue on. So it's going to go across. that around, that'll get that up, stick some glue down in there. It's not, you know, anything that it's super precise, you're just trying to get some kind of getting that shape on there. Maybe I'll do one more towards the top. I just don't want my wires showing through. 
So it's kind of that kind of shape. So let's do one more piece. I'll start down here at the bottom and spiral up from there. And we'll glue down the strip. Just wrap it around. Just don't want a lot of blumpies and glumpies. So get it going flattened down. All right, so we kind of got our shape going here. And that's just with my paper towel or tissue or whatever you want to use um, for that. So now I'm going to take my white because I want this base one to be white. So I'm going to take my white coffee filter, roughly just cut, cut it across the center. It doesn't have to be exact. And I cut these strips Oh, half inch, five eighths of an inch, somewhere around in there. Just cut it from across the whole width. When I have about this much of this edge left here, I save that. I'll use that for something else um, further into the completion of this. So I'm gonna then I'm gonna take and wrap this. On the outside so I'm going to put some again you start it at an angle some glue on it I don't always go all the way down the whole thing because then it gets kind of messy so it's wrapping if it looks like it's going at too steep of an angle to overlap with the previous um, wrap you can go over it with some more. Sometimes I just let it go the way it wants to go and then I can go cover over more because we're going to do a couple layers of this. So. so just kind of allow it to go the way that it wants to go. If before you do this white you want to go clean your fingers off, um, not a bad idea. Fortunately the pink's not coming off on here. Okay. So and I'm just going to keep wrapping on this until I get it pretty much covered. Let's see. Let's start right in here. And again, don't have to be super tidy with your glue. You can always add some more too. But just wrapping this around. This point this one I don't want to go too far so I'm just going to cut it off and wrap it around to the bottom adding glue as you need to to get these corners all to stick down okay I don't want that one to stick down that edge doesn't want to so what I can just do is take and put another layer over the top of it Holding it snug while I do that. Put the glue on and you just, you just want to make sure everything gets covered over. So let's start another one right here because that's paper towel. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, the paper towel and the coffee filter. So you gotta Kind of look at it in the good light so that you can see that you're covered all of the paper towel with the coffee filter paper. And you will get gluey. <laughs> Warning! I do like wrapping around underneath to the underneath side as well. Okay. 
let's go ahead and put this one last strip on there. I would probably take a little bit more time if I weren't doing this as a video right now. I want to get this all wrapped for you. So you're just kind of squishing it around, adding a little glue if you need to. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Make sure all your little edgies are covered, that sort of thing. Okay. Go over those edges. So add a little glue where you need to and smooth those down. And so that makes my little base. That's about the size that I want it. So I'm gonna throw a little heat on there and dry the glue a little bit. Okay, so I can let that sit for a second. All right, now with this guy, now I have on these guys added some um, lace that I have, and it's kind of chunky. This is like a velvety lace. This one's um, um, a kind of, they're kind of crocheted like lace. So I use the black lace on these little guys, and I've used this kind of grayish lace on here. Um, you could also use yarn, cording, something. I'm just trying to get an extra little edge underneath. And this one, I am going to use my hot glue so that it, I can glue it on and get it hooked down faster for you. So, And I'm just having it just hang out the edge underneath that edge of the, the cap, mushroom cap. So I'm just going to keep working my way around. You don't want it pulled too tightly because then it kind of wants to flip up. So go there and roll that to the edge because I don't mind that it kind of flips up. And I I wish I knew where this is just a, a lace stuff that I had in my stash. So I can't really say where I got it from because don't really recall. <laughs> so oh, I hope the sound is on my video. It just dawned on me. I don't know that I have the sound on. I may have just goofed up. But I won't know until I have this done. So I may have to overdub it. I haven't been doing videos much lately, so, <laughs> and this is with my phone, so, and I didn't think about the fact that I probably don't have the sound on. I have to redo it. All right, so there I have the little lace underneath. So this is going to then end up glued onto there, but I need to do some um, little beard thingies. I don't know what else to call them. These little guys um, at the top here and then also at the bottom. And that's where I'm using this piece. So I'm going to cut this off. And you want these about an inch-ish. I want it to, to go along that curve. And I also want it to have a little bit of the, the tan at the edge. So on that wide end of the curve, ink that edge. I 
I can also take my ink and especially at the base and then just barely touch it up further up into So then with this guy, then I'm going to just take little tiny snips. All right. This. I got this guy, so I'm gonna just take. Let's see, and I want it to be oh a little ways down, so I'm gonna go right about in here. Glue all the way around. Let's see what is in that glue. I have to do another layer. that's on there and then we can just kind of crumple those up a little bit and that's about where I want that to be we'll put the ones on the bottom at the very end sometimes you can squish this around a little bit and then I see and then I can get it to stand up if by squishing those wires around just a squidge. All right, now to make this the the little gill things underneath, I'm going to use um, this one, which I used. Um, I used like crushed olive. I think I used some brushed corduroy, and I probably used some of the um, where'd it go? The um, vintage photo splattered all on there. So then I'm going to take whatever the width of this is, you want to make this about half of that width. So probably with this one, I'm going to make these about an inch. I want this edge to be pretty straight. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. So I'm going to another roll of it. About an inch. Let's go ahead and attach those two together. And we're going to just take these guys and we're just going to fold back and forth. It does not have to be perfect, so you don't have to sit and score it or something like that. We're just accordion folding and you're going a little bit around a curve so sometimes they're a little bit of an angle but it's just tiny little pleats see how it's just doing that little pleat we're about an eighth of an inch wide stuff is really easy to pleat and then going around the curve. It's tiny little pleats. If you don't think anybody's going to ever look up inside your mushroom, you don't even have to put these gill things in there. But, and they don't have to be perfect. All right, so I'm going to bring one end over to the other end and glue them together. So then it's going to kind of, it's kind of like using the Tim Holtz rosette. It's like making a rosette sometimes. Oh, this is just want to fold right there. Scrunchled it. And if it's not perfect, it actually adds to the charm, personally, I think. So 
But before I hook that down, I do need to cut out of this piece here. I'm going to cut a circle, oh, about a three quarter inch circle. And I'm going to put some glue on it around the edges. And this is where it's handy if you have another set of hands, because while you hold this guy all together, before you can stick this down, it's nice if you had another set of hands. But if you don't, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, and I kind of squish it anyway. Stick that down. Oh, and if some of those kind of came up, it doesn't really much matter if it's not perfect. Maybe get a little glue down in there, get those to stick down a little bit more. Uh, it probably could have benefited from being a little bit longer to go underneath there. This is going to tuck up inside of there, but it looks like it's a little bit bigger than I want. So I'm just going to run around my edge trim about an eighth of an inch off so you can trim you know the smallest amount you can always trim some more you can't make it bigger again so just trim around it to where it just sits kind of in the bottom kind of tucks up a little underneath you don't want it super flat across and you can use a little bit more off And I, um, I meant to do it to the brighter side was up. But that's the side I put the, the little string thing, or the little circle thing on. So we're going to have a little bit more gray underneath here. But we can also take some of my inks, touch it up a little bit more. Maybe add a little, throw a little green on there. Bring it up. All right, so then dry that a sec. And then I'm going to take and cut the center out. And I need that center big enough to where this can go through it. So that'll work fine. So again, I'm going to use my hot glue so that I have to sit here and hold it forever. Put a big old blob of glue. And then I will... At, throw some additional glue in um, if I were to do oh, nuts I gotta put it through there first as I said I'll use the hot glue just so to get it started and then throw some additional glue if you want it tilted at an angle a little bit you might want to do that Stick that on there. Then you can always throw a little bit more glue down in there and let that just dry, regular glue. And then slip this into place. And then I'll run around with my glue and glue those edges of those fin things down, but I'll just let them sit there and place for it. So, so now we just need to add our little finishing touches to this guy and to do that I can take some of this just cut some skinny little pieces I'm kind of like making a fringe Well, that probably should be about enough. So before I cut those apart, I'm going to just ink the ends. Probably it should have been easier before I cut it to ink these ends just to darken them a little bit. Oh, my fingers are so sticky. So like three strips or so in each of them. So cut those apart around the bottom. Glue those onto the bottom. These are kind of like the little mushroom roots. They don't have to be perfect. 
And then I'm going to just crunch them up a little. Just like we did with these little things there. Let's crunch those. So that just adds that little root stuff to the bottom. And now the last thing that I'll do is I'll take some of the white squeeze, squeeze bottles. So it's you can do this with just uh, a little paintbrush and dipping it or the, a toothpick and dipping it if you don't have this dimensional paint. And you're just, and this is where, just be patient and put some on. They're a little more scattered as they're a little denser up towards the top and then scatter some. And then you can also put some down on the base edge. Don't go too fast because then they start getting strings between them. So, which is what I was getting a bit of there. So, I'm just, this is where definitely. I would take more time than I'm doing right now. But in the interest of time, I'm kind of scooting along a little faster than I normally would. So anyway, all right, so that gives me another little red capped mushroom, a little smaller than this one, but works well with these guys and then you're going to need to let the um, white paint dry but that gives you a little toadstool it's ready for the fairies so fun easy to do as i said paper towels coffee filters some wire and um, a little bit of, of lace um, that if you don't have it you can leave that out um, but it you could, like I said, you could do a little yarn edge around there or something just to get, it's just to give it some more um, layers, but super quick, super easy to make some really fun little paper mushrooms with stuff you just have around the house and you get messy fingers. What could be better? So anyway, there we go. There's a mushroom for you. Thanks a bunch.